All right, today is the one year anniversary of Travis Scott's Look My Mic and Fly. Uh, I scored this film a year ago, and now, a year later, I think it deserves a little update. Um, at least the trailer does. And so today we're gonna score the trailer all again. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I scored a film in FL Studio. A lot of people have wondered how this was possible, um, how you score a film in FL. Uh, it's not easy, but it definitely can be done, and I want more of you guys to be doing it. So I'm gonna walk you through the process and all the little tips and tricks that I learned um, you know, through working on this film for, for a couple years. So we'll hop into the computer and uh, we'll rescore the trailer. All right, so the first place that we actually wanna to begin today is in NFL Studio. Where we actually wanna start is Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro is a video editing uh, piece of software. Um, and the reason that we're going to start here, I'm gonna show you a really quick tip when using FL Studio. Uh, it is not the best for video. So what I like to do in Premiere Pro is basically put markers um, in the area of the video where we need to kind of hit some transitions or, you know, let's say have the full song come in. And so on a lot of the film, what we end up doing is actually just putting like a, a piece, you know, a tone basically, so it's like bleep, and I would know that at that that sound that I needed to be at, um, you know, the height of the song, and then boom, you know, Travis's music would come in. By the way, you can do this on any piece of video software. I'm just using Premiere Pro because it's the, the the program that I use. So basically, just drag and drop in your video, um, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new item. For me, I just do bars and tone. Um, now that we have bars and tone, as you can see, it is here. Um, but basically what we want to do is we just want to find the sections uh, of the, uh, the trailer where they're the most impactful or where we need, might need to hit certain spots. So we'll skim through, we'll find those spots, and we'll put different bars and tone in, and hopefully I'll be able to remember that. But it'll just be like an extra guiding track when we take it to FL Studio so that we don't miss a cue. This is a, a great example here. It's like you want to hit a cue right on, open this up. You want to hit a cue right where Travis is about to like snap his hand there. And so um, sometimes in FL Studio it's a bit laggy, but if I know that you know exactly when he closes his hands, there's the bleep. Um, and if I just hit the cue at that point with the music, whether that's like a big 808 drop or transition, whatever it is, I'll know that I'll be um, in time with, with the film. I'm just going to now export a version of uh, the trailer as is and then a version uh, of just the solo beeps. Then in FL Studio, I'm going to be able to actually have the film up in the corner so we can actually watch it. It's probably going to lag. Uh, most likely it's going to lag because i got OBS and everything running too. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see that. It's probably going to drift, but hopefully with that second um, uh, version that we exported with the beeps, um, we'll at least be able to not use the visual but use the audio portion of it um, to be able to sync things up. So I'll export those now and then we'll uh, go into FL Studio. I'll show you how you use the video player. All right, so now we are back in FL Studio. So I exported um, the second version there. So the next thing that we want to do is actually add in the FL uh, video player. So if you've never used this before, and I haven't used it in a minute, I'm kind of forgetting the name. Where the hell is it? All right, so now we're back in FL Studio. So what we want to actually fire up is the Fruity Video player. So I'm going to open this up. And the next thing we want to do is just import the video. So the next thing, if you just click on that button, find the trailer that you want, double click on it. And now if we actually just hit play, it's going to start to work there. So the one thing I'll let you know is that when you are in pattern mode, it is just going to, you'll watch, I'll hit play. It is just going to play the little loop, the pattern loop here. So what you want to be in when you're working with video is in song mode and the second thing that you probably want to do is you want to just put a random pattern in there and just stretch it all the way out because if in song mode it, you only have again it looped for like 10 seconds it's going to keep going back all the way to the beginning and you don't want that you want to be able to, to scrub. So the second thing that we are going to do is basically we'll just make a, a brand new pattern we'll drag it in here and we know that the song is, is roughly uh, one minute so we'll drag it all the way out to about 60 seconds or so then the next thing um, we can do is then hit play on our video and we'll see that uh, it actually kind of matches up Who's ready to see 
So that was the old trailer. We don't need any of that sound, so I'm gonna mute it. Um, but the one thing that we do need is we need that second track that we just exported. So I called it Travis Scott um, Guide. I'm just gonna drag it in here, and boom. As you can see now, when we come to these moments, and it's not gonna be perfect, you'll see that there's the tone. And if you actually look here, we're about to get to that section um, you know, where it transitions. Same thing with here, this was the clap. Um, actually, this falls right on the clap, which is great. But you'll see, um, Okay, I messed that up. See, and this is uh, the wonderful uh, FL player screwing up already. So it's there. So that gives you the guide track to let you know that uh, the video that you're watching, uh, at least when it does the lagging, which it's going to do, um, will at least have the bits and pieces. So now that we have this, we are pretty much uh, able to kind of begin um, scoring the film. Okay guys, so uh, one of the most frustrating parts of dealing with FL Studio is uh, actually just figuring out the right BPM for the project file. And this is something that we usually don't have to think about when we're in music, but film and music are different in the the sense that um, you know in a timeline um, they're dealing with uh, uh, frames per second and we're dealing with uh, beats beats per minute BPM 153 BPM is the the BPM for Travis's um, highest in the room so if we're going to just start at 153 all of the kind of hits that we have are gonna be slightly off now that's kind of okay because um, you might not be able to distinguish between like a frame like this is a great example where it's almost perfect it's a little bit off but you'll never be able to to, to, to tell uh, that it doesn't hit exactly on the cut whereas this one I'm not so sure so you know with knowing uh, that this is the spot that we need to hit I think it's smartest to work backwards so what we're going to do is we know that our BPM is 153 we're gonna take note of that and uh, what we're gonna do though is we are just going to slide um, the pattern and everything over so that it hits right where it needs to hit so the reason that we're doing this is because I don't really care if some of this stuff is slightly off because it's not as important as this big kind of moment in time another thing that we can do is actually um, play with the BPM and maybe ramp up to 153 so if we want these other moments let's say for this one if it's a little bit off if we actually switch the BPM it'll move this um, this marker closer to that time frame so we we don't need to get into that right yet but these are all things that you have to consider when scoring in FL Studio um, and you know honestly in most programs but for right now this is the main thing I'm gonna do alt T create a marker and say you know big moment because this is the moment after he slams the door we see the look mom I can fly and this is where we actually want the song to fully come in so basically we're working backwards from this moment so what we need to do now is 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 score all this kind of leading into this this piece and so this is where kind of the fun begins the first thing that we want to do is, is actually start incorporating um, the actual song and the melody and a quick little trick uh, if you don't know music theory and you don't want to spend a lot of time um, breaking down the songs if you can actually download for most songs uh, the MIDI files somebody's already kind of done the work and then you can kind of use those MIDI files to expand on the original composition so for right now for time time saving purposes and stuff um, I just grabbed the um, the two melodies from highest in the room I just grabbed a MIDI file of them downloaded it through them in FL studio and now we can go find the right sounds that kind of work and then also start playing it into the real track all right so so far I have taken the song and like I said for that big moment I pretty much kind of found the drop so just take a quick listen I'm nice in the room. So we'll have the, we'll filter it so it's like on the highest and the dun, and then it'll kind of hit on that one big moment. Like that. But basically, that's the moment that we're leading up to and then after this moment, we can pretty much just leave it and let all of the footage and stuff like that kind of show over top. What we need to do now is kind of work before that. Um, and one way that you can work before that is actually with the audio. So I actually took a bit of the audio. We'll start blending it in at this moment. For the film in general, I used a lot of Spitfire plugins. We're gonna be using some great string collections, but they also have a free BBC library and a labs library. And I'm gonna be using some of that. So I use this kind of, uh, this moon guitar um, for the main melody so just take a listen to this so 
so now that we have that main piece in there that can be the main uh, part that we'll use throughout the song we can add a bunch of effects to kind of like uh, mask it a bit as it kind of winds up but the main thing that we really need to focus on now is is building some more movement around it and a great thing to do uh, that with is with strings so you, for this you could use the BBC library um, not the full version because the full version is about a thousand bucks but I'm pretty sure they have a free version that you can grab um, but what I'm going to be using is um, some of the London um, the LCO strings um, from from Spitfire and so I'll start to kind of play around it another thing that I did uh, just so you guys should know is I actually went to mixed and key and it's in D minor I don't know uh, music theory uh, should, which should be another <laughs> uh, sign that you guys can do this as well too I don't know music theory so we can use programs um, uh, like mixed and key and captain chords and all that type of stuff to then find cool interesting chords around it or we can kind of freestyle uh, for this I kind of like to do freestyling because I really realized a lot of this is just holding the tension and I'm going to show you what I mean by that I'll go back to pattern mode I'm literally just going to put this in loop and just try and figure out something that sounds pretty cool so we'll do that right now right there we have a couple string ideas I'll lay those down and uh, then we'll come back to it and I'll show you what I did all right so that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take this is actually day two um, so I put in like a good two or three hours uh, which is another thing about working with video and, and, and music is that it takes a long time um, just for like a little snippet okay so this is where we are right now um, so I created a couple different sections so we'll just take a quick little listen here to actually let's listen to the full thing and then we'll kind of go from there Okay, so that's what we came up with so far. Um, I'll just quickly break down the different kind of sections. So that's the main melody from the song that we're using. So we're gonna kind of preview it. We'll use some filtering and stuff to really bring it in. Uh, right now, the way that it kind of comes in is way too strong. Um, I just have like a really long reverb, and I think we can kind of wash it off, uh, wash it out. Um, again, this is the Labs uh, Moon Guitar. Uh, I'm using this is a free plugin, so you can use that as well too. Then on top of that, we also have some strings and some bass. So the bass comes in way too aggressive, so we'll have to also do some filtering with that. Uh, but just take a listen to this. So what I did here to add some tension, I'm just going to get rid of these, um, is these two notes, the C and the D. Uh, um, I'm using them at the exact same time, so like normally we would just kind of stick with, with chords and stuff, but if you really want to add some tension, uh, what you can do is is bring the notes, find notes that are closer together rather than like a, a triad or whatever. Um, you can find notes uh, that, that are in the same key, very close together, and you stack them on top of each other and it adds this uh, this tension um, that can really help kind of sell the, the, move, the mood in, um, you know, the trailer or the video file that you're working on with. So that is the string section. The song is the selling point. Like when we hit this big moment, no, oh, didn't play there, but when you hit that big moment, you want Highest in the Room to be like the star of the show. So these bits and pieces, you don't want to take away from the star of the show. You really want to like help uh, ramp up to the star. And by doing that, you can feature little bits of audio and stuff like I did in here of this upcoming song, but you know, manipulate it and stuff. I love this little section here. Like, listen. So I just took the original audio, I just stretched it um, like crazy so it sounds kind of warped. And then when you have these bending strings, like listen to this. 
you know, now that we have the base of the track, we understand, um, you know, what's happening uh, structurally. Now we have to actually uh, apply all the effects and the filters and stuff so that we're not taking away from the moments in the trailer. Unfortunately, with the trailer, I don't, because it's all mashed together, it's the old trailer, I don't have the actual, like, audio um, of the kids and Travis talking and stuff like that. So it's totally muted. But this would be a moment where, like, you might want to filter out things or take, take away bits and pieces so that, you know, when Travis is speaking, you can clearly understand him and, and, and in those moments. So... We're giving away too much of the song there, so I think like the easiest thing that we can do is just uh, add a little bit of a of a filter. Paramedic EQ. So I think we could do. I think we just do something like that. To start us off, so just take a listen to this. And then we'll kind of, when it shows his face, that's when we can kind of let go of some of that filter. So I'm going to quickly do some automations, and when I come back, I'll uh, show you everything that I've did. All right, so this is what I was able to come up with. Um, as you can see, a lot of automation and stuff going on right now. Um, I think a big part of all of this is being able to kind of use the effects that we know within hip hop and blend them into this world. And so by that you can use halftime, lots of filters, 808s, and a bunch of different other um, stuff that we would traditionally kind of use in hip hop to really sell these moments. So now what we have, just take a listen. Okay, so that's the beginning. Um, sorry for the crackling. I got a lot going on here with the contact and with OBS and stuff. But um, basically, all I did is I filtered out some of the cut off off of the uh, Moog um, sound that's that's doing the bass line. On top of that, too, inside contact, I was able to fool around with the dynamics uh, in the instruments. And so, by fooling around with the dynamics, um, you get. Let me actually just a preview of just this. You get like a softer sound. I also, mute the Moog. So we really build to this moment um, right here, which is like our first uh, uh, guide, uh, which is the beep right here. And so to even sell that even, even farther, what I did is I rolled off um, some of the high end on the uh, melody. We'll take a listen to that. So then you can start to hear the full melody um, when we first hit this marker. And then on top of that, what I did is I grabbed a, a sound effect from Splice. So we kind of have this hit, um, so we know that this is kind of like the transition, a uh, transitional moment. And so by playing around with a bunch of the expression, the cutoffs, and then some other effects, I have like um, outer uh, outer space delay to kind of mimic some of the sound effects that were on Astro World um, to help those moments. So by using all of these effects and stuff together, you get great little transitions like this piece. Let me just take a listen. that's how we were able to transition into this whole other scene and we hit it right on the marker here um, yeah by having you know we have to cut off rise up and then come down we have the outer uh, space effect roll in as you can see we have the dynamics totally cut off and then we have you know some sound effects and then we're now at this point we're 25 seconds into like the 60 minute trailer we're now introducing some of the sounds I have effects and stuff on the original audio but some of those sounds so you get the uh, so you get that um, and you start hearing you start at least being un being able to understand where we're about to go um, and then the cool part the part that I'm like probably most excited on and this whole piece uh, is this part where I totally just manipulated um, the original audio, I stretched it out, I time stretched it, and then I added a bunch of bending strings with like a riser whoosh um, to kind of 
uh, end the scene and it kind of feels like everything's kind of like disintegrating so i know for the the trailer that we currently have i don't think the scenes particularly speak directly to that but when you're working let's say with a director or editing team this is a great opportunity to have like a really solid idea in audio bring it to the team and be like you know what i think it'd be great you know that scene of travis where he's yelling or whatever maybe we we, we move it from the start and we move it here so you can have those more kind of creative uh, conversations because the audio can really help sell these moments and if there's a visual cue um, and, and you're, you have a great relationship with the editing team and with the director you might be able to move some of those things to really help um, yeah you know, bring it all to a close so let's just take a listen to it all slowing down <laughs> then you can rise up to the big final moment, uh, which would sound something like this. Hope I make it out of here. She saw my eyes, she know I'm gone. And then we end it right there with like at the very end with the Netflix logo. So you have this big moment and this is where you could also add, I'm not going to get into it, but like um, a lot more sound design as far as like the, the crowd noises, uh, cars driving by, like anything that's kind of in the scene visually, you can actually use that um, uh, audio, you know, grab some sound effects and stuff and layer them in. And those can kind of help with the transition and guiding um, the, the viewer through like a really um, intense uh, scene because you want at the very end this big moment when he's raging and everyone's going you know into the mosh pits and stuff you really want to sell that with a lot of these sound effects so that it feels like as a viewer that you're actually in in the mosh pit with travis with the fans and stuff like that and then at the end uh, it rises up to kind of like the, the netflix uh, close so um i'm the next thing that i need to do now is i need to actually export this as a mp3 or a wave file i'll bring it back into premiere pro and i'll actually uh, sync it up to the trailer all right so there you have it um that was the tutorial today on the one year anniversary of look my mic and fly for me personally it was a crazy experience um and it also a big learning curve and i hope by showing the tutorial today um you are you're able to learn something from that um because i think the thing that i would love to see from this is um more hip-hop producers uh, specifically more black producers as well um, um, people of color uh, get into the film and, and TV industry. I think, you know, there's a lot of um, great opportunities and great careers that a lot of us can be having, um, but we just don't think or know necessarily that we have the tools. And by knowing FL Studio um, and all these things and blending it with the video player and a little bit of premiere skills, um, I think that's gonna open up a world of opportunities for a lot of individuals. So so what I would suggest that you do is, is reach up to some local directors and stuff in your community who might be shooting um, music videos, might be shooting uh, films, uh, you know, trying to, to make it in the in the film industry the same way you're trying to make it in the music industry. Start collaborating, uh, collaborating with them now. Uh, you can learn through that process and, uh, you know, if, have the same hustle the same way that you do. Eventually, you're both going to get to this place where you're, you're finally, you know, in, in this world where you can, you know, they can have a film and, and maybe you can score it. Maybe uh, win an Oscar or Emmy or some other crazy stuff outside of just, you know, thinking about winning a Grammy. So I really hope that this was beneficial to you guys. Thank you to all the fans that always hit me up saying how much they love the score and stuff. And uh, yeah, stay safe guys.